Hello everyone and welcome to Part Development in Kerbal Space Program and in this video I would like to present my version of the Dragon 2 spacecraft in honor of SpaceX launching to the ISS on a dem demonstration flight recently. It's not perfect, there are some rough edges, uh, some edges on this here. Um, I've got a lot of touch up to do but it's certainly serviceable and functional and uh, we do have the nose cone openable and if we want to put in so this is in stock right now this is stock ksp 1.3.1 in fact which is what i designed for and so so that remains compatible so it fits the the normal docking port quite well and i don't have parachutes built in so you would have to add some parachutes the iva is a pain and i can't quite get that right but uh Anyway, there we go. I, I want to actually see whether the parachutes work properly like that. Uh, but uh, we do have space for seven Kerbals, and we'll have four for now. And I will take this into Realism Overhaul, but there's a catch in Realism Overhaul that I'll ha have to discuss. The trunk is here. So there we have the trunk. And in real life, the total mass is about 9.5 tons empty. Uh, this uh, is full of fuel right now and if we take uh, the ablator is a little bit extra but uh, 6.35 tons in stock is what I went for and it is designed to match the 2.5 meter stages and unfortunately this is 1.3.1 so we don't have the new version decouplers so we're down to this and also I'll have to use the old tanks I mean what a horror. Um, I like the old tanks anyway. It's fine. A skipper should do the trick. And I would like fins because because we have fins up here, the center of lift, well actually the center of lift is, I don't think it's showing the right place. It's definitely wobbly as if the center of lift is higher than the center of mass when we launch. I've already tried it obviously. Um, so we want to make sure that we have some fins at the bottom and I'll just go with these. Okay, well, it's not reading something properly, but anyway, this is the idea. Uh, let's put in the liquid fuel oxidizer mop. Now, liquid fuel and oxidizer for the Super Dracos, uh, they do have a reasonable amount of thrust. Surprisingly, they don't have a you know normal launch escape system kind of thrust. But anyway, uh, 7 to 8 is what you're looking at with the Super Dracos, but they only have 7 seconds worth of fuel, and that's realistic. That's how much they have. Uh, they can throttle down, obviously, so you can moderate that, but it's not a whole lot of fuel up there except for the mop propellant for the RCS thrusters, which is how the Dragon 2 would rendezvous with the station and just use RCS. So, yeah. Uh, let's make sure we don't dump the trunk early. And so, Dragon 2 test. So after this, I'll bring it into Realism Overhaul and I'll show you. There's an issue with the trunk. Um, I don't know why. Oh, I'm I'm sitting on the tail. That's fine. Uh, uh, quickly though. Okay. Uh, so IVA is awkward. It's tough to fit seven kerbals in. And I, it, from the pictures, it looked like it was seven uh, across. I mean, sorry, four across and then three behind. Um, I don't have a screen yet, and their heads are sort of clipping through the edge of the thing, which is weird. I should shift them down a little bit. But, yep, yeah, uh, it's a little bit better from the center seats. It's only the edge ones that are clipping a bit, so you can see how it looks like from here. Um, obviously, the docking port up there and the hatch up front there. I think that's how the layout is, but I'm not sure. There aren't a whole lot of layout schematics available. The pod isn't perfect. Uh, the only schematics I could find were for the older version of it, the older look, and they've definitely made some changes, so I had to eyeball some stuff to match that. Now one catch to this is that the pod has a very high heat shield loading. Uh, it's pretty heavy compared to its heat shield area. So, you're going to have to watch out on the really steep returns. 
that would be true in real life as well. I don't know how well it could actually return from the moon, for instance. It just doesn't have a lot of surface area. Okay, well, that's a pretty awkward orbit, but separation. And we'll throttle down and get that ready. And we'll do a burn at apoapsis to finish it off. RCS thrusters, as you can see. Very maneuverable. And the center of mass of the pod is right here, in line with these. But the center of mass overall is brought down a little bit by the trunk. So maybe I'll think about that. <laughs> I don't know if I want the center of mass up here or not. Oh, uh, we should do an electric charge test. So right now, where are we? Where's the sun? Okay, the sun is like that. So it makes sense we're not charging right. What does it say, the trunk? It says energy flow 0 .0, 0 0.1 now. Now it's recharging. But we can get much better. And I used basic sort of standards based on the surface area. And now we get about four. Four is the max, four kilowatts for this. Um, in realism overhaul, I think it's 5.7 based on the realism overhaul standards for um, how much surface area it's covering and all that. So yeah, we've got substantial power. Okay, we want to do a re-entry test anyway, but before we do that, uh, we can open the nose cone, and that's that. So close nose cone, yep, close nose cone. I don't know about the 340 second specific impulse, I might change that, but overall the performance is about right. Um, there's no hatch. Uh, I don't, I haven't really reconciled myself to how patches are placed in Kerbal Space Program. And besides, um, Dragon 2's you can't EVA from, really. So, what happens if I push EVA? Okay, can't exit, module has no hatch. Well, that's fine. Okay, so there's no risk there. Alright, so that all seems fine. Let's uh, separate off the trunk and prepare for the entry. So, clean separation. I should have done that normal, but... I don't know what color the bottom of the heat shield is, actually. So, it's just this tan color right now. Now, technically, the heat, sh I mean, the heat shield is not a separate part. It's built in. I may consider making it a separate part if that causes an issue. We'll see in realism overhaul. We do see a uh, little temperature reading here. And really, I wouldn't mind if the ablator burned off a little bit quicker to keep things cool. That might be a good thing. Okay, now I genuinely don't know whether the parachutes will work properly if inside that fairing. Maybe not. We'll see. Okay, well. It looks like it'll be fine. But are two enough to hold the pod? It's still pretty heavy. Well. 10 meters per second. Hmm. Might be worthwhile to dump some mod propellant or some ablator if you're just gonna use two parachutes. They use more than two. I think they use four on the real one. We'll see whether it has crash tolerance. We could use the Super Dracos to cushion it a little bit. We've got a little bit of fuel left. No landing legs though. Oh, did it too soon. Ah, oh, Okay, so maybe you'll want to use more than two parachutes. Yeah. Alright, to realism overhaul. 
Okay, so here we are in Realism Overhaul, and while the stock version is sized to 2.5 meter tanks, uh, this version is sized, of course, to the Falcon 9 from KK Launchers Pack. So that is the launcher that uh, you would want to use, I think. And the issue is with the trunk, and I'll show you that in a second. I also added Textures Unlimited Shininess. I might have overdone it a bit, though. <laughs> so it's up to you. If you want to use this in stock, you'll uh, and of course I'll link the mod in the video description. But if you want to use it in stock, you need to delete the RO config. You'll have the prefix RO. And if you don't want the shininess, you need to delete the TU file. Or uh, if you don't have textures unlimited, you won't see it either. Um, now, interestingly, uh, taking a look at the specs of the Dragon 2, um, its thrust weight ratio on the Super Dracos is not that high. It's actually 5.5 5, uh, 5 .5 to 6.5. And they are to spec, so I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, that's surprising for a launch escape system for it to be that low. Uh, usually it's breakneck acceleration. Uh, but yeah, that's what it is. And again, about 7 seconds. The amount of uh, fuel in here, MMHNN 204 for the Super Dracos is to spec, uh, 1,388 kilograms. And um, it, though it's not clear to me that that fuel is shared by the RCS system, so there is room for you to sneak more fuel in. Uh, and that is given the amount of space that is not occupied by the cabin. So there is, uh, the cabin sort of tapers in like this. And uh, so there's uh, space all around at the bottom. Uh, for tanks and such. So, yeah, there is space for that. And food bar and oxygen, as you would expect, ablator. We'll see whether that works or not. Maybe it won't. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's take this outside and see what the problem is. Now, there's only a decoupler at the top of the trunk, not the bottom. So, at the bottom, on the interface between the trunk and the rocket, you'll need to put a decoupler. Okay, so the problem is. Right when I load it, it seems like the spacecraft has separated from the rest of everything, and uh, yeah, including the trunk. So the trunk is part of the separate, separate part here, you can see. We seem to have other issues, obviously. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a problem with the trunk, and I'm not clear why it is the way it is. So, what we're going to do is, and I've checked the colliders, the colliders are in the correct position. Uh, I've checked what I can check. I don't understand this. So, we're just going to use the trunk from Tundra Aerospace, actually, which was the previous, and then whenever I wanted to use the Dragon 2 before I made my own model, I used to use the Tundra Aerospace one. So, we're just going to take the trunk from the Tundra Aerospace pack and and see if that works out for us. So unfortunately I can't use my shiny trunk. Okay, there it is. Uh, work in pro uh, I wrote the configuration for this. I don't know if there's another RO configuration floating around. Okay, so yeah, we'll just use that and that should work. It is a definite problem with the trunk that I have. Okay, so here we are and uh, Yep, everything looks fine this time. I think we'll just try and use KOS to launch it. Uh, unfortunately, the pod is looking way shiny compared to the trunk now. <laughs> Not quite matching. But anyway, run Falcon 9. Okay, we have separation of the first stage and ignition of the second stage. It should have reserved fuel in the first stage. Yeah, it's got 3,615 meters per second for whatever recovery method we want. 
plenty of fuel left over to get this to orbit. Yeah, it might be a little bit too shiny. <laughs> it's very, very, very shiny right now. You can try and tweak that in the TU configuration. I was actually surprised by how heavy Dragon 2 is. 9.5 tons dry is pretty darn heavy. That is with the trunk, though. Now, the ISP here is less than it was in stock. It's only 290 here for the RCS system, and it's 280 for the Super Dracos. The Super Dracos are sea level optimized because they're, they have to be used for launch board scenario. Okay, the second stage has thrall down as it's close to making orbit, but really high on the thrust weight ratio. Okay, and it has shut down. And for some reason... Oh, I had kept my throttle up, that's why. Okay, so we can separate. And I want to do a heat shield test. The electric charge, of course, on the... Actually, this trunk is nicer in some ways with, well... Yeah, the internal structure. I like the textures on the inside better than I have on mine. But anyway, um, it's it would be easy if you, if you wanted to make this shinier, you could just take this texture into Photoshop and brighten it up if you want to. Um, but yeah, all right. So let's not waste time. Um, I wonder if they would retro burn first and then let go. Well, of course they would. Okay, so. Retrograde RCS on. Oh, uh, here we have to actually stage this um, in order to get the RCS on. Must remember that. RCS has to be staged. Uh, let me check the nose cap. Mm, okay, but unfortunately no parachutes in, or a docking port right now. I didn't really create a hinge, so sorry about that. that I'll do that later. I also did not create an umbilical between the trunk and the spacecraft, so that's uh, on the to-do list. I only started making this model like on Friday, so it's been a quick turnaround, but I decided to... I, I just wanted to do it quickly. <laughs> I, I didn't want to belabor it, otherwise it could take forever. The reflections are interesting. Anyway, so... Uh, oh. I guess technically they would retro burn with the RCS, but I'll just do with the Super Dracos. Ooh, that was close. All right, that'll be good enough. Um, let's go normal. Separate off the trunk. It actually tucks in a little bit. Yeah, the heat shield, maybe I should make it a separate part just so it doesn't look like a mirror. <laughs> well, I mean, that wouldn't be a problem without textures unlimited. Now, it's admittedly not a very high poly model. That's why you see these edges here. Um, I could have added many more polygons. Incidentally, the other pods, sometimes, depending on the angle you look at them, they might seem like they're not properly covered by the heat shield, but they are. Even if you look at a distance, they seem like they're sticking out, but they're not. Of course, this area would have to be sort of heat shielded anyway, because of the thrust from the Super Dracos. So it probably wouldn't matter too much. Okay, we're getting some special effects, if you will, flame effects. I'm going to turn off the RCS to see if this is stable. It's wiggling off to the side a bit, and I don't know why. I mean, technically it'd be okay, you could steer like that and all, but it's not actually supposed to be unbalanced at all. Hmm. I 
I did not actually make a center of mass uh, offset. Yeah, and a center mass offset would probably help in this case. The g-forces are too high. We should probably have a descent mode thing going. Once again, the heavy heat shield loading, the fact that it's a small area and a pretty heavy pod is part of the problem. Okay, well, it came through just fine. There's more than enough ablator, maybe we can dump some of that. Uh, but I didn't put the parachute. So, uh, in this moment of doom for our Valiant Kerbals, Jeb, Bill, Bob, and <laughs> Valentina. Oh, uh, not uh, we've got more Kerbals than I really wanted. Mine, Kerman, Jane, Kerman, Z uh, Zelski, Fogas. Uh, no Valentina, actually. Uh, Valentina ended up safe. Well, uh, with this, I'll say thank you for watching. The link will be in the video description. All my mods are Creative Commons with attribution, so if you're wondering about that, uh, just don't claim it as your own. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.